entrepreneurship is like a marathon. It's not about the goal, it's more about the climb. Entrepreneurship is learning to be comfortable amidst uncertainty. Look at opportunities instead of challenges. The main goal that makes us keep going is really that we create something that will be beneficial and useful for the Philippine economy. It's creating something magnificent and also knowing a lot of people in the startup industry is such an experience that I think you'll only experience once in a lifetime. Welcome to the Idea Space Batch 2018 Demo Day. Out of 12 aspiring startups, the Magnificent Seven have emerged as the most innovative in the country. In business, there are far more important things than money and funding. You are here today because your dreams remain far bigger than have come your way. this community is to help these people, those who are planning to start their own journey and to be able to provide what they need, to be able to come up with the right product, to find the right partners, and to feel the right market. It's all about how can you stay strong beyond all the things that's happening and how can we be inspired to see that vision come through. Our inspiration for our innovation is seeing a lot of artists not being able to find sustainable income and finding the right commercial opportunities within the Philippines. And we see there's so many possibilities for us to use the extensive Filipino talent we have here in the Philippines. It made us believe that the quality of the Filipino products can compete out there in the global market. That's why Easy Fulfill is here to make sure that our Filipino products make it internationally. The main goal that makes us keep going is really that we create something that will be beneficial and useful for the Philippine economy. We've experienced a lot of community work together and we realized that there's a lot of other people like us that wants to make impact in the society. We are able to help more people with the things that we do and so we use that as fuel to go on further. To each of you, I want to encourage you to trust yourself. The important thing is to keep going. Let's continue to strive to seek and not to yield. This Idea Space journey has been very fulfilling for us and we know this is just the beginning. We are very thankful for Idea Space for giving us this opportunity to show their customer what Wiser is. Idea Space has really been meaningful because aside from the support we got from them, we also got a family. The last six years have been wonderful and hopefully we'll have more and more startups that are really going to conquer the world. created Idea Space in 2012 so that the Philippines could take part in this startup revolution. The startups, all of you, you're the ones who make the magic happen. It's just helped by the Formula One team of these wonderful mentors. They come in and give so much of their personal time. Thank you very much. Mentors. Actually, focuses on multiple intelligences of students, so it's not just one size fits all learning. So we try to uh, bring out the best from every student. And that's the contribution we want for the community, a community that accepts everybody. Automart.ph is 
helping to put that trust in the marketplace so much so that buyers will be willing to buy and then sellers will be willing to sell because they trust each other. Coco Hotel is a tech hotel brand and aggregator focusing on the getaway destinations in the Philippines and soon to be Southeast Asia. Airship is an end-to-end -end logistics management software that enables career companies to deliver their packages in a safe and efficient manner. Ricky makes it easy for real estate developers to send information to their sales team using our data management and artificial intelligence platform. Make sure you join communities like Idea Space. They're going to make your journey so much more valuable, so much more meaningful, and you'll get so much help that you didn't even know existed. Uh, it's not going to be easy. You have to really love what you're doing, and it rewards when come within a year, I guess. It, it's not going to come easily. You have to just grind and um, trust the process. Experience Philippines is a community and travel tech platform that focuses on human connection in an, in an environment of surprise mystery adventures. Good afternoon, everyone. Idea Space Demo Day will begin in a few minutes. We'd like to inform everyone that there will be networking events later after the demo day. Kindly refer to the schedule being flashed on the screen. We have a few reminders. For the best Zoom experience, we recommend you choose the speaker view. Kindly click the view button at the upper right side of your screen and select speaker view. We also request that our audience members kindly keep their microphones on mute and their videos turned off for the duration of the program. However, we encourage you to participate by asking questions or sharing your comments in the chat box. We are also inviting everyone to join our after party on Gather Town at 6 p.m. Registration opens at 4.30. You can simply go to our Gather event page create or dress up your avatar and have fun. Lastly, recording any part of the show is strictly prohibited under the Philippine Data Privacy Act of 2012 and the anti-wiretapping law. Please refrain from recording and sharing any part of this event. However, it is my duty to inform everyone that this event will be recorded for future use. If you do not agree to the recording, you may quietly exit the platform. Otherwise, please remain on Zoom. Right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this year's Idea Space Demo Day. I'm Cass Monzon, co-founder and CEO of Workbeat, and I will be your host this afternoon. Co-hosting with me today is Oski King, co-founder of Cleaning Lady PH. As graduates of the program ourselves, we're so honored to be part of this event and to welcome everybody today. I'll also take this opportunity to apologize in advance if you hear my dogs participate in the background. <laughs> Demo Day is one of the most important events for the Idea Space Acceleration Program as it's the first public showcase of the startups. Parang kahapon lang, ginawa din namin to and I still remember the nerves. Over the past decade, the program has helped more than 300 startup founders and over 100 startups, including ours. Right, Oski? That is right, Gas. And you know what? They are just getting started. With their future forward vision, I'm certain that they have even more in store for us. This year's demo day carries the theme, The Future Our Way. And during the program, we'll get to see how these startups plan to solve key problems and create a positive and lasting impact. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Special shout out as well for, to our friends who are watching via our Facebook page. 
Hello, everybody. You know, personally, I cannot wait. Today's demo day is an opportunity for the 14 startups to share their journey with the Philippine startup community, the business community, fellow entrepreneurs, and even friends from all over the world. That's right. And since 2019, we've been seeing more teams outside Metro Manila join the program. Did you know, Cass, that six out of the 40 startups in this cohort are outside NCR? So we want to acknowledge our friends from Visayas and Mindanao. Maayong hapon sa inyong tanan. I already feel that it's going to be an exciting afternoon. Wherever you're watching from, be it from Zoom or our live stream on Facebook, we encourage you to use the chat box and participate. Share nyo naman yung excitement nyo with us and maybe give special shout outs to your favorite startups. And of course, connect and share your thoughts with your fellow members in our burgeoning startup community. Now, without further ado, to kick off this program and to give his opening remarks, we would now like to welcome to the virtual stage the president of Idea Space, Mr. Butch Maley. A poet once said that hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings a tune without the words, and never stops tall. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the annual Idea Space Demo Day. We look forward to this event all year, and today we look with renewed hope and belief at the Philippine startup ecosystem. You will hear pitches from 14 startups they constitute the future, our way. Idea Space celebrates its 10th anniversary this year, and our startup ecosystem has changed dramatically since 2012 when we first began operations. The startups that we are showcasing are proof of that. We continue to believe that the elusive first Philippine unicorn is not that far away on the horizon. To our startups, you have all been through an intensive incubation program. I hope that you gained a lot from it and that your company is in better shape today than you were at the beginning of the program. The silver lining of doing our second virtual program is that there are a number of you who joined from the Visayas and Mindanao, making your batch more diverse and more inclusive. In addition, your batch is quite advanced. Several of you have revenues and a few of you have already started raising funding. In any case, just being here today makes you a winner. There are investors and companies who are present, and I am certain that they cannot wait to hear your pitch. I'd like to thank the Idea Space team for working so hard to making this to make this event a reality. Our gratitude also goes to the mentors for their time and patience spent on the startups. In closing, I'd like to stress to our startups how important it is to keep hope alive in your hearts. You may have to pivot to a new business model or even a new idea, but don't be afraid to take chances. Man was not made for safe harbors, as someone once said. As you probably know by now, there will be plenty of disappointments along the way and the temptation to give up on your dream of becoming an entrepreneur will be strong. But if you believe in your, in your idea or product, keep going, no matter what. Create wealth for yourselves, your employees, and our country. And keep that hope 
with the feathers that purchase in the soul flying. And may 2022 and all the years that follow be your moment in the sun. Thank you all for being here. Man is not made for safe harbors. Keep going no matter what, indeed. Thank you, Sir Butch, as always. What an inspiring and lovely speech. Alam mo, I always get goosebumps whenever I listen to his speeches. So again, for those of you who just joined us here on Zoom, please don't forget to click on the speaker view for the best experience. The Intensive Idea Space Acceleration Program has long been referred to as a startup competition. But more than that, it aims to be a strong support system for the local startup community. It is a community that has helped startups stay afloat and find creative solutions. And they're always on the lookout for more entrepreneurs and startups to join the community. Sobrang totoo niyan, Cass, no? And as graduates ourselves of the program, we can't recommend it enough, tama ba, Cass? Naho, definitely I can say <laughs> that Idea Space has taught me a lot about the value of staying disciplined and motivated throughout my startup journey. I am truly grateful for the network of mentorship and support that Idea Space has given us and I know that we couldn't have made it this far without Idea Space. Ah, that is so heartfelt, Kaz. And you know what? It really makes me also no, miss our days with Idea Space, especially when we still had our face-to-face -face activities. I can still vividly remember no, when we had our one-week boot camp in Antipolo, and that for me has been the highlight of my entire Idea Space journey. But that's enough with the nostalgia for now. The Idea Space team has put together a short video to introduce the founders of Cohort 9 to our Demo Day audience. Let's take a look. <laughs> Everything was so hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> Our Idea Space Accelerator program began with a vision to create future forward solutions for the Philippines. We have supported over 100 entrepreneurs and have helped them transform their ventures into impactful and sustainable businesses over the past 10 years. With the pandemic that happened, we've conducted all interviews, mentoring sessions, and workshops online. The online program uh, gave us an advantage because wherever we are, we're able to join a program like Idea Space, wherein if it is face to face, it would be impossible for us. It was also our first time to have these many startups from Visayas and Mindanao. Being a Mindanaoan, particularly a Cagayanon, it's really a pride to represent your city and you know be part of idea space program most of the opportunities were are actually given to the people at the capital as someone who's been wanting to join it before but couldn't because it was held in manila it's one of the proudest moments of my life today we are seeing more startups thrive in the country's inclusive startup ecosystem especially after the creation of the innovative startup act of 2019 we joined Idea Space because we know that they help early stage startups such as Piazza. We were just students when we first formed this startup. The experience that we had was limited to some internships. So we felt like we wanted more mentorship from more senior and more experienced industry leaders, especially in the startup space. Prior to joining Idea Space, our business model was a hit and miss and we don't really know much about how to fundraise. One of the greatest challenges that we had is really narrowing down on the problem that we want to, to solve with the professional organizations. When we entered the program, after going through all the mentorships, after going through all of those workshops, we've realized that we are actually not targeting the right people. Through the Accelerator program, we were able to overcome the challenges with identifying and defining our initial target segment of the market. As a mentor, I was very excited to learn about the passion points behind the businesses. And it was a very rewarding experience. Mentorship's been critical in terms of allowing us to move forward. I'm happy to share that we've had pilot programs here already. We also took advantage of the resources with their mentors in different fields. 
uh, that could, you know, tell us what to do, give us advice. They gave us actionable feedback about things we need to do, things about improving our product, things about improving our, our, our sales pipeline. Thankfully, with Idea Space, when we're inside the program, we were able to find structure that helped us to overcome our challenge in pushing through with our uh, prospective clients. We expected exposure and some support in terms of financing and mentorship. But what we didn't expect was a tight-knit community that we became a part of. That CEO interaction, <laughs> that small circle within the cohort really helped us out. The program is certainly one for the books. The 14 startups of Cohort 9 are passionate about doing more for the Philippines. They are coming up with innovative solutions to help solve some of the biggest challenges in our country today. This year's theme is the future our way, and it means creating a tech forward tomorrow for the Philippines. For me, the future our way means that we need to create more solutions for the new problems that we encounter. Because we're innovators, we have that much responsibility because a lot of people are, are getting inspiration from us. And since it is our way, it doesn't mean that you need to do it alone. So we as startup founders, we have the power to actually shape the future. And that future belongs to those people who believe in the power of their dreams. The program is really for Filipino startups. So regardless of where you are in your startup journey, Idea Space Kubo is here to offer our guidance and support. Now, it's being open to everyone, including us here in the Visayas and Mindanao. So we're very thankful and happy. We are here for Philippine startups, whether you're from Luzon, Visayas, or Mindanao. Everyone is welcome. 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 Pwede mo apil tanan. Pwede na mo apil. Mahimo mo apil ang tanan. Pwede mo apil tanan. Para ni sa tanan. Everyone. 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 Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Gusto ko lang makisama. Oh, <laughs> Everyone is welcome. Seriously, I got goosebumps na naman just watching that video. You know, these founders are so inspiring. You'll feel it in their voices, with, you know, how much passion they have for what they're doing. I'm actually very inspired um, and very hopeful for the future of our community just by seeing this again, you know. The video is also a reminder that, again, nga, everybody is welcome to apply to Idea Space if you have a bold solution that can help build the nation and really champion innovation in our country. You are very much welcome to join the program. I can't agree more, Cass. No, I remember when we applied in the program back in 2016, Cleaning Lady back then was just an idea. Idea Space has immensely helped us hold our business and made us better entrepreneurs. And fast forward to today, I am happy to share that our impact-driven enterprise is even thriving during this pandemic. So, if you're a startup that has been interested in joining the program, take this as your shot, as your shot sign to give it a shot. Ito na yun, guys. So applications will be out soon, so keep an eye on the Idea Space social media pages for more updates. By the way, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Doi Bea, Voyager CEO and Idea Space Board member. And also with us today is DOS Secretary Secboy de la Peña. Thank you, sirs, for joining us. Thank you, sir, and welcome. Welcome. You know, with that, I believe this is it. It's time to introduce our first batch of startups, Oski. Our first cluster of startups today have sought to revolutionize the way we work. From employee engagement all the way to empowering the next generation of the digital talent economy. I'm so excited to see how we can all help shape the future of work. Let us learn about how their solutions can potentially change the way we live our daily lives. Now let's all give a warm, maybe quiet welcome on Zoom to Better Team, Tiwala, and Experto.
the pandemic has dramatically reshaped the nature of work for many organizations. And if there's one thing that we've all realized during this challenging time, it is the importance of our employees' overall well-being. But being aware of something and actually putting that knowledge into practice are two different things. My name is Bo, and I am the founder and CEO of Better Team. Everything we do is about improving employee experience. We prioritize what matters to employees and their organizations. A lot has changed since the year 2000. Let's have a quick look. If basketball was to the 90s, billiards was to the early 2000s. Blame it on the popularity of Efren Bata Reyes, really. Everyone wanted to be a world pool master back then. And for the music lovers out there, I bet you have probably asked your parents to give to you this first gen iPod. And mobile phones, they look like this. It seems like a long time ago, but it feels just like yesterday. A lot has happened since year 2000, particularly in our workforce. Here's actually what happened. Back in 2000, we have 52% boomers still in our workforce. We fast forward to 2020, that's now 52% millennials. We even started having Gen Zs joining our labor force. So the workforce has gone a complete transformation in just 20 years. And why does that matter? It matters because boomers and Gen Xers, they stay in their company for at least eight years. And for the millennials, a little over three years. And for Gen Zs, about two years. It matters because it is expensive to hire the replacement of these talents. On an average, a company spends 54% of that employee's annual salary to find a replacement. It matters because it takes 46 working days for our recruitment folks to fill a vacant role, which means that someone must take the extra job while the search for the new employee is ongoing. It matters because eight in 10 employees will not work in a company with bad reputation. In 2020, only three out of 10 employees in our target market are engaged in their jobs. This disengagement translated into 50% of them quitting their jobs annually 18% dip in productivity and has cost our target market over a billion dollar loss in revenue. What then must we do? Well, at first we have to realize that to engage these employees, we must meet them where they are at. And guess where they are at right now? In their smartphones, 100% of them, all of them, in fact, 63% of them at least have two smartphones. So the solution we created is a mobile app meeting employees where they are at to help them engage with their company, an all-in-one employee experience and wellness platform that enables people leaders to track their employee sentiments, provide on-demand mental health support, and streamline rewards and recognition. But we are more than just your typical survey platform. Through to our mission of improving employee experience differently, we built better team around the needs and wants of our users. Our data collection is user behavior driven, while features such as rewards, perks, and on-demand mental health, they are designed for managers to understand what matters to their employees. The gamified fitness and peer-to-peer -peer messaging features, they are designed to build a community and break down silos. Currently, our pilots are ongoing and we've created partnerships with well-known outsourcing companies such as Accenture, Telos, StarTech, TDCX, and Nearsoul, and they really believe in our service. Since our launch on December 28th, we have onboarded 1,200 employees in our platform. We are serving the over $26 billion sector of outsourcing in the country, the only sector that employs over 1.4 million Filipinos that are spread across 900 outsourcing companies. Focusing on our serviceable market, they are having an average resignation rate of 42% annually, subscribe to a platform or two to track employee engagement, and has a working budget of $2.45 per employee per month to improve employee experience. It is obvious that an improved employee experience is a top priority for our target market today. Our business model is simple. A company pays us $2.12 per active employee monthly, and other sources of revenues are transaction fees, set the fees, and premium features fees. We've worked in some of the known outsourcing companies in the sector, which gave us the background, the proven track record and vision to succeed. We have over 30 years of combined domain expertise, which makes us the best team to build and implement our solution. What we are looking for today are investors, that's number one, and that's to fuel our trip to our next milestone, and corporate partners, companies who want an efficient way of improving employee experience in their workplace. Come talk to us after, and together, 
let's improve employee experience differently. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeffrey, CEO and co-founder of Tuala. Meet Sam. Sam is an account executive who processes 10 to 20 sales contracts per day, and all her workflows are paperwork. It is costly, inefficient, and insecure. She has to print, read the document, pass it onto the messenger, or have it delivered by a courier, then wait for the signers to send it back. And she needs to do that for every single signer. No wonder the process takes 7 to 14 days. She waited longer, has spent more, and yet still failed to meet her quota simply because of a missing signature. Missing signature was identified as a top hurdle in closing a sale according to a study from Aberdeen in 2019. It takes about 7 days to complete a signing cycle and shipping costs of a document with three signers will cost around 1,200 pesos back and forth. Also, a survey conducted by PMAP and PwC in 2020 showed that 73% of 161 CEOs said that a hybrid work setup will stay even after the pandemic. Fortunately or not fortunately, Sam is not alone in this endeavor. In fact, every department from every company in all industries have some sort of an agreement workflows that are manual and waiting to be automated. The global e-signature market is worth $25 to $50 billion with a compound annual growth rate of 36.7%. There are more than 10,000 mid to large enterprises and more than 100,000 small businesses in the Philippines worth $300 million. 5% of that translates to $15 million of annual recurring revenue. Introducing Tuala, the next generation e-signature platform for signing, verifying, and storing digital contracts and documents. It's powered by blockchain smart contracts, the first of its kind in the Philippines. Blockchain technology guarantees the security and authenticity of your digital documents. We concluded our beta program five months ago and now have more than 1,900 users from 150 different companies. We were able to convert 15 of them and now have more than 27 companies in the sales pipeline for our API plans. We have inked seven corporate partnerships, and just a month ago, we signed a deal with a local cooperative bank and have started a pilot program with the local government of Kauaian City in Isabella. Our users are happy. With Tuala, we are making the contract process simpler, safer, and faster. Tuala helps reduce contract signing time from 7 to 14 days down to just 2 hours. They never have to worry about career costs again as everything is done online. Tuala empowers organizations to be 100% hybrid work setup compatible. Tuala, compared to competitors, provides both electronic and digital signature, making us more legal as it satisfies the requirements of the E-Commerce Act and the rules on electronic evidence. We are the only platform that verifies the identities of our signers by an AI-enabled identity verification or EKYC process. Others rely on third-party certification authority to secure their documents. Tuala uses its own proprietary blockchain anchoring technology. This allows Tuala to provide the service at 30 to 50 percent more affordable than the competition. Other applications only allow users to sign a completed document. Tuala will soon allow real-time document collaborations, where users can edit, comment, and finalize the document before signing. Users also have access to more than 500 pre-made contract templates and forms. We use subscription as our business model that starts from $10 per sender for unlimited digital signature. We offer custom plans for SMBs and enterprises. We also charge per APA costs for our APA plans. Our team is a perfect mix of skills and experience to build a company that can scale. We have a total of 18 years of combined IT experience and nine years of B2B business development experience. We are seeking 500,000 pre-saved safe investment that we will use to build a team to further develop the product and to acquire more customers. Tuala is more than just document signing. With our Tuala ID, a proprietary blockchain self-sovereign ID, we can enable a lot of services online. Imagine logging into a website, applying for a business permit or a bank loan, or even entering a building all by just scanning a QR code. Five to 10 years from now, everything will be done online and everything will be digital. Tuala would like to be in the forefront in providing those services in a way we can all trust. We are Tuala, we enable trust in the digital world, and we power hybrid work future.
today. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. I am Eman, founder and CEO of Experto, and we're transforming professional organizations to a digital group. As working professionals, amidst accelerating changes in technology and markets, we know that we have to continuously learn to stay competitive and relevant in our industry. And 80 to 90% of professionals believe that professional organizations have an important and leading role in helping them in their lifelong learning journey. Early involvement of young professionals to these professional organizations can encourage competence, confidence, and awareness of and access to lifelong learning through their programs and events such as seminars, conferences, workshops, and access to publications. But based on personal experience as a professional and an organizer, the biggest frustrations are the manual processes when attending trainings and conferences for professional development and the lack of system, systems integration of registration, conference platform, assessment, and certification hosted by the professional organizations. Over the past year, many professional organizations have shared that planning and managing programs and events is a big challenge and have reached out for help given that the pandemic has greatly impacted their physical activities and are forced to go digital. We have partnered with these professional organizations and associations of engineers, scientists, doctors, and even Rotarians for their webinars, conventions, and conferences. According to these organizations, they have limited manpower and they lack the technology and expertise to effectively manage programs and events that require a lot of administrative work. Some of them tried hacking together their own solutions to deliver their programs, like the use of Google and Microsoft Forms, Zoom, and Facebook Live, but this still lacks integration, is inconsistent, and a bit all over the place. And that's where we come in. Experto provides a full suite of services to help professional organizations thrive in the digital world, from registration, payment collection, virtual event platforms, engagement tools, and issuance of digital certificates. Our goal is to help them take full advantage of technology so that they can focus their efforts on their core activities, their passion, their work, their cause, and Experto can handle all the messy stuff and technology challenges that they face. We have a serviceable, obtainable market which we peg at $17 million. We are also planning to expand to the ASEAN region with 40 million professionals given the strong existing linkages among organizations. We already have inquiries from interested professional societies from Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Our primary revenue comes in the form of participant credits that, are, that the organization avails. We charge a service fee per participant to cover the cost of the end-to-end -end services we provide. We also generate additional revenue from fees on add-on features and transactions from paid events. And we will also be charging subscription fees for our credentialing platform. And I'm so proud of what the team has achieved since we started operations in July 2020. We have partnered with 21 organizations with 44,000 attendees in more than 30 webinars and 17 major local and international conferences. These generated more than 4.5 million of sales revenue for Experto, and this is just with our MVP. We've been encouraged by good feedback that we received from our happy customers and users that resulted to consistent NPS rating of above 80 and customer satisfaction of 98%. We are happy to provide a simpler and smarter way of delivering value beyond our customers' expectations. As a team, we have over 50 years of combined experience deploying digital transformation across different industries, and we are actively involved with local and international professional societies and associations. We're not only an we're not only an experienced team, but we also have the, the network to make this happen. So we know the space, we know the right inroads, and we know how to scale the startup domain. And Experto is more than just an event management system. In the next 12 months, we will add enhancements to our conference platform, and we will start developing our credentialing management system to issue secured and verifiable digital credentials for professionals. Next, we will provide a system for membership and training management, becoming a full SaaS platform for professional organizations and associations. Aside from the support from our incubators and accelerator, we have won startup grants from Dream Bigger Ventures, DOSTP Cert, and Accenture to continue to build our product and serve our clients. Together with our stakeholders, our mission is to unlock the potential of the professional network as dynamic sources and providers of career development, skill building, and professional networking opportunities for professionals. 
So if you're excited to be part of a platform that will be home to thousands and millions of professionals and their communities, we are currently fundraising and seeking strategic advisors to continue our product development roadmap as well as build our Rockstar team, starting from our customers in the Philippines, then moving to Southeast Asia and beyond. My email's right there. Let's talk. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you once again to Better Team, Tuala, and Experto. We would like to call on the founders for each of the startups to join us now here on the virtual stage so we can congratulate each of you. To our attendees, please feel free to type in your messages to our awesome startups. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Well, I got to tell you, in a few years' time, technology will assess when people have worked too much and when they need to recharge and, and how business contracts will need to be signed, as well as, you know, how training events will be planned. These are the trends in business and technology today. So on behalf of the Rockstar teams in Tuala, Experto, and Better Team, thank you all so much for your interest in learning more about the technology that we're creating, and that's to build a better future for it. We hope that we get to share more about what we're building with you in our after event activity hosted in Metaverse this afternoon. So see you all there. Congratulations to your teams. Your solutions are helping solve those issues that we all run into either in the workplace or in our daily lives. I, for one, am excited to see your startups reach their full potential in the near future. All right. Amazing. Congratulations once again to our first three startups. A little bird told me, though, that our audience is super awestruck na naging speechless na sila. Wow. <laughs> so I just would like to remind everybody to please feel free to use the chat box, ask questions, interact with the community. Now for our guests naman, again, you want to know more about them, their business, and how you can support them, you, might, you may find them later at the after party later tonight at 6 p.m. as mentioned by Bo in Idea Space's very own Metaverse. This space was created by our friends at NextPay and is powered by GatherCown. For our special guests here on Zoom, don't worry, you will have a chance to meet the startups right after this program during our exclusive networking activity. So sit tight everyone, let's welcome the man our next three startups. The past two years have shown us the value of really taking care of our health. Our next three presenters, Splore, Salmeds, and Fitzcovery, are building solutions that focus on making health and wellness more accessible from the comfort of our own homes. Let's find out how they plan to make it easier for virtually anyone to kickstart and maintain their health and wellness. Hey guys, my name is Albi and I'm the co-founder of Splore, a fitness and wellness marketplace that builds sustainable, beneficial behaviors. Why do you and I struggle with fitness? Fitness simply requires high levels of willpower, which is a finite resource. In the morning, most of our willpower is consumed getting up and ready for the day. During the day, we are consumed with work, further draining down our willpower. When we finally get back home, all we want to do is watch Netflix with our loved ones. This constantly leaves us alone, seeping through our phones at the end of the day, telling ourselves again and again, I will work out tomorrow. In Splore, we address this common issue at a deeper and more holistic level. We are constantly engaging with our customers to learn how they can build repeatable habits in fitness. We iterate based on their engagement with our products and release features that can potentially reshape their behaviors. The cycle then continues. Ultimately, we don't offer classes. We offer a lifestyle. So while we do solve for instruction like other platforms, we are primarily solving human behavior in relation to fitness and health. 
Our pilot product is our web platform, which provides motivation to stay fit by bringing fitness coaches and consumers together in scheduled and drop-in digital classes. We are providing convenience and personalization for the consumers so that significantly less willpower is required from them to get a workout in. Exercising at home is now as easy as pulling up a Netflix episode. Simply go to explorefitness.com, choose your next activity, and you're now ready to work out with the Explore community. After each class, you will be rewarded with sweat drops, which you can use as currency towards products from some of our brand partners. Sweat drops will serve as a habit forming mechanism so that we can all jumpstart our fitness and wellness routines and develop them into repeatable habits. Additionally, we partner with local SMEs to support the fitness and health industry in our country. We allow for these great brands to get discovered while benefiting the consumers of their products and services. The online fitness market comprises of 48 million people in the Philippines with a low-hanging fruit of 9.7 million non-sedentary Filipinos. However, it is also within our plans to enter the physical fitness space and expand to APAC and eventually the $828 billion global fitness market. Our business model is simple. We buy coaches' time at a premium to the average hourly rate and sell that same time to multiple consumers, including corporate clients. Most marketplaces make a percentage out of every transaction. We make a multiple. In 2021, we have validated some of our assumptions on consumer behaviors, marketing channels, and operations without even launching an actual product and using little to no advertising. Regardless, we were still able to generate more than $3,000 in revenues with almost 400 total participants. The dip in Q4 is primarily due to the holiday season. We are expecting revenues and participants to increase at least three folds this year as we close more corporate clients and expand our offerings based on our learnings in 2021. Some of our upcoming releases include subscriptions, not only to our live classes, but also to results-based programs that provide much needed structure for our users. Furthermore, our classes and programs will go beyond fitness, encompassing the entire wellness space, including mental health and nutrition. Lastly, we are developing our mobile app so that we can fully implement our validated features and take a giant step towards health and fitness inclusivity. So here's the team. I have experience working on an e-commerce startup and spent two years as an equity research analyst in BDO Nomura. My co-founder, Franz, scaled his workforce solutions company and is now our COO. We have been working together in the fitness industry for more than three years and we have two industry leaders as advisors in our team and a tech consultant from Amazon headquarters. We are already generating revenues and learning how to build and maintain fitness and wellness habits even before our platform is complete. However, we have yet to make wellness more receptive to a broader audience. Therefore, our ask is for you to help us help everyone. Help us spread our movement toward better health and wellness for the general population by leading people who resonate with our mission towards our platform, towards our community of like-minded people. These people can be in the form of individuals, groups, companies, or organizations that value health and wellness, but need our support. That way, we can help in reshaping their habits, bringing them closer to their full potentials. After all, we are here with you every step of the way. Thank you. Hi, I'm Orly Palompon, the founder of Salmeds. Salmeds is about Rosa, an elderly who must be taking eight medicines per day to manage cervical conditions while surviving on day-to-day -day expenses, made more severe by her low income and dependence on her children for support. Rosa, a typical vulnerable Filipino undergoing the pain points of Philippine healthcare, concerns of doctor shortage non-adherence to medications resulting to serious complications often requiring catastrophic hospitalization. The bottom line of Rosa's predicament is the problem of affordability and access to maintenance medication. Because in the Philippines, our medicines is four times more expensive than our Asian neighbors. 
prompting majority of Filipinos to skip their treatments, compounded by the difficulty of our senior citizens to find their medicines because of only 35% availability of what we are looking for, and the lack of drugstores in some areas. If affordability and accessibility is the problem, worry no more as we adapt innovation and technology at Salmeds. What we are doing is for the elderly to achieve better health and access from their homes affordable, equally effective medicines with personalized care to become treatment compliant and live longer, productive, quality lives. And we have the fraction in Salmeds pilot operation in Cebu, experienced early by our over 200 clients with regular maintenance medicines and over a hundred patient help while in this COVID pandemic. They save an aggregate of 1.5 million pesos worth of money, which they can use to pay for other family needs and rendered 1,785 safety hours saved and spent to productive quality family time at home. With our online solution at www.salvage.com, Patients can browse and order multiple maintenance medication as a subscription service, customer friendly, and with free delivery nationwide in various preventive and curative medicine plans for as low as 99 pesos per month. Salmeds, a health inclusion company building technology solution, utilizing a plant to patient proprietary platform, resulting to an average of 62% savings on medication costs for the elderly. The Philippines medicine market in 2020 is a whopping 253 billion. 71% of them branded generics with equivalent efficacy available in Salmids. Salmid services advocates not only for economic impact but for improving the quality of lives, offering convenience to the 28 million adult to elderly Filipinos who are already online with the potential to access affordable and effective medicines nationwide. Why is Salmeds better compared to provider, other providers? We are because we offer better health with medicine source from the same manufacturers of same quality with other trusted, heavily advertised, and popularly endorsed retailers, but bigger savings for our customers with our smart sourcing, online first, and asset light fulfillment. Others treat this business as transactional while we make it personal relationship care with our premium services. Making medicines accessible at home with free delivery even for 99 pesos purchase on subscription in certain areas. Empowering our elderly not to miss their dose, giving out free health monitoring device kits to monitor their health condition real time, and offer other health services accessible at home, making our patients, their families, and their doctors worry free, coupled with a monitoring app provided to our medicine subscribers, believing on the principle you cannot manage what you cannot measure. And of course, better health is having satisfied your loyal patients, which keep us going by advocating for us. Salvage is founded by 10 year ex Pfizer and 16 years pharma entrepreneur and a health focused academic res executive, researcher, and policymaker in nursing and gerontology with a team of pharmacists. They are leaving legacy of adherence due to savings in prescribed medicines. Same health benefits and savings we want our customers to experience in founding Salmeds. To sustain our value proposition, we are looking for impact-driven team members to expand our services. Channel partners to grow our reach, enablers to increase our firepower, and above all, inviting more customers to help, like Rosa. It could be your parents, and grandparents, relatives, or those of your friends and workmates. We invite you to join us in achieving better health at affordable cost and build a health inclusion technology company in the Philippines with Salmeds. Thank you. Hi, my name is Michael. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Fitzcovery. Fitzcovery is a marketplace platform for fitness. We help fitness vendors easily create their own business on our platform, and we also help consumers find their favorite workouts. The fitness industry is becoming more and more digital, as online fitness is growing seven times in the next seven years, accelerated by COVID. 
But even after COVID ends and consumers are going back to their favorite yoga studios or favorite gyms, discovery for fitness is still going to be online. Bookings and reservations is still going to be online. So like it or not, a lot of fitness vendors are going to have to become more and more digital. But this is actually quite difficult. It's hard for fitness trainers and gym businesses to go online. Sure, it's easy to create your own website, but if you wanna have things such as events management, online workout videos, online payments, membership management, all of these use additional plugins, third-party integrations, all of this can get very complicated. You can use expensive services such as MindBody or Glowfox. These can cost from $150 a month up to $500 a month. And the worst part is when you use these services, many times they simply don't work. Glowfox, MindBody, some of the major players around the world do not support this in Asia. So you see F45, one of the biggest franchises, you cannot take online payments in Korea, in Philippines. So for fitness trainers and gym owners, this can be very, very complicated because they aren't techies. They don't know how to navigate the tech landscape to create a sophisticated business. But we are techies. Our backgrounds intersect fitness and technology. I used to work at Google for over seven years on big consumer products such as Gmail and Google Drive. I'm also an ambassador for Under Armour and Spartan Race. My partner, Francis, is mentored by the CTO of his university. And he's also a Garmin Run Club leader. We have the experience creating tech products to reach millions of customers, marketing tech products to millions of customers. And we also have a network in fitness to reach our first thousand customers, first thousand vendors and get quick user feedback. We created one of the biggest fitness communities in the Philippines before we even started on Fitzcovery. Our mission is to empower the 4 million trainers around the world and 200,000 fitness business to easily create an online business and get discovered. So let's take a look at what this actually means. Fitzcovery does three primary things. Number one, we give you an easy platform to create your own website in just 30 minutes. You can see on this video, all you need to do is select a few photos, write your own captions, and just like that, you have your own fitness website. You do not need to know how to code. You do not need to hire developers. You can do everything in just 30 minutes on our platform. In step two, we give you free system tools to get started. Things like events management, which is what you see right now. Things like online workout programs, which is what you see right now. Additional things such as online payments, uh, membership subscriptions, product sales, anything fitness vendors need to monetize, we have directly on our platform. Ultimately, what we want to do is automate sales and increase exposure. What Airbnb did for home rentals, they made it easier and faster. What Shopify did for, for product sales, they made it easier and faster. That's what we want to do for the fitness industry. We want to make it easier and we want to make it faster. Our users love using Fitzcovery because it's easy, because it's fast. And we're gaining organic traffic with very little marketing spend, growing at 28% month over month. Our vendors are getting more clients and spending less time doing so. Our monetization plan is aligned with our vendor success, taking a 10% commission on the transaction that go through our platform. Anything a vendor needs to monetize their business, events, bookings, workout programs, memberships. We also have a corporate wellness program that's $10 per user per month. And our growth plan is to evolve from a SaaS business, which is what we are right now, into becoming a marketplace. In step one, we give them the affordable tools for vendors to manage and grow their business. In step two, we help them get more customers onto their website, which is hosted on our platform. Then in step three, we consolidate the vendors and consumers all under one single marketplace. Our competitors are all single-sided platforms. Things like ClassPass and Peloton, they're discovery platforms for consumers. But as a vendor, I can't create my business on ClassPass. I can't be a trainer on Peloton. Instead, if I want to create my own business, I would use tools such as MindBody, Wix, or Glowfox. However, after I create my business on these tools, they don't help me get discovered. Fitzcovery is the only platform that helps you create your business and get discovered. We're looking to raise $500,000. Most of this will be in tech and platforms. Some of this will be used for vendor acquisition to finish our product and bring it to, our, to, to market. We're really excited about what's to come next. And if you are excited as us, let's get after these games. Beautiful. Thank you again to Splore, Salmeds, and Fitzcovery. By the way, before we continue, 
we would like to acknowledge the presence of our special guests today. Our chairman at Idea Space, Mr. Manuel V. Pangilinan. Mr. Mon Fernandez, CEO of Mainilad. Mr. Senen Perlada, EVP and COO at Phil Export. And Ms. Maria Lourdes Rubeno, General Manager of the National Development Company. We hope that you have been enjoying the pitches and we hope you'll stay for the pitches that are coming next. So, for now, we will be calling again the amazing founders of the startups who just, who, whom we heard just pitch to turn on their cameras and say a quick hello to our audience. Founders, please turn on your cameras. Erica, your problem. Oh, sorry. I was in need. Apolo apologies. <laughs> um, again, my name is Erica from Splore, and I know I can speak on behalf of our founders, as well as Fitzcovery and Salmits, that we are here to spread awareness on health, fitness, and wellness so that the greater population of the Philippines can find their way into a better life. So thank you so much for your time, and we are looking forward to speaking with you all later. Thank you so much, everybody. Congratulations once again. All right. So if you're looking to prioritize your health, you know, like me, who's been trying and almost always failing at it, I'm sure you'll have a blast talking to these health and wellness founders. Additionally, if you're someone whose investment thesis revolves around this space, we invite you to speak to them as well later. Grabe, alam mo kas, parang as I was listening na to the three presentations, I can't help but think na parang pwede sa akin yon. I think we all agree that we need to make health a top priority, especially since this pandemic is not yet over. I agree 100%. The great awakening brought about by the pandemic has definitely put health and wellness front and center for all of us. Exactly. Totoong totoo yan, Cass. Kaya naman, health is wealth, everybody. The solutions these startups have created are not just for efficiency, but for helping us build better habits in the long run. Aren't we thankful that Splore, Salmeds, and Fitzcovery are here? So, I believe that we're almost halfway with our presentations. How many pitches do we have left, Cass? Mm, thank you for asking, Oski. We have eight pitches remaining spread across three groups. But before that, we will take a quick break from the startup pitches naman. Because we invited a special guest to give us a short talk about the exciting trends in the Philippine startup ecosystem and how we can all take part and contribute to our ever-growing digital economy. I'm sure that our audience would be very interested to hear this. So folks, let's all welcome the founding partner of Gobi Core Philippine Fund, Carlo Delantar. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Carlo Delantar. I'm part of the Gobi Core Philippine Fund and today uh, delivering the keynote on what's exciting for the Philippine startup ecosystem. And hopefully, you too can be part of the success that's uh, coming our way for our economy, but also the ideas and solutions you can provide to this country. So let's start. So uh, just starting off, really, in, in ASEAN, in the region, we talk about this in our report, where the Philippines is actually pretty high up on the list when it comes to population. However, in terms of uh, GNI per capita, of course, GMV per capita, we're one of the lowest. Now, that doesn't deter opportunity for the Philippines, especially during a crisis. And as we know, with any crisis comes with opportunity. Now, looking back the past few years, you can see that cumulatively, the Philippines only received 3% of the amount of uh, investments coming for the ASEAN region. Now, with this, it gives us a, a level playing field, or at least like a, an idea of what's happening in the region and how competitive the, 
the investment landscape is. Now, going to the more positive end is really that uh, in the Philippines, the Philippines is really a, a hospitable space for, for startups where we see that consumption uh, for the percentage of GDP, we're seeing that 90% really goes towards consumption, whereby most of the regional average is around hovering around 67 to 70%. And I think this is fairly important to know, especially you guys going through um, this program, seeing how you can uh, take advantage, but also leverage what's to come for the Philippines. Interestingly enough, when we created this report over the past four years, we've seen an increase of investments, but um, you can see here that, um, well, now that we're going to 2022, um, we have exceeded the past three years of investments just by 2021 alone. And why is this important to know? One, it's because uh, we see this metric or a statistic data really that uh, there are investments coming in and there is actually a, a good market for consumers that are really riding the technology uh, adoption for the Philippines. Now, of course, how do we even get there? First, it's important to remember the infrastructure needs to be in place. So during the pandemic, we did see an increase of uh, uh, internet speeds. Uh, across the board, while also seeing digital payments um, exponentially growing higher and higher every single year with the change of pace when it comes to purchasing products and services. And this is where sort of where I wanted to focus on in a bit really is this concept of the Iron Triangle. Why is this important? The Iron Triangle is a term coined by Jack Ma from Alibaba, whereby uh, he describes a digital ecosystem being supported or at least uh, being guided by the Iron Triangle. And the Iron Triangle comprises of the pillars of e-commerce, where we see most of the habit-forming capabilities, whether that you're a consumer or you're a supplier, you're seeing this as a platform for us to do business, especially during a pandemic. And then second, finance. Uh, it's important to remember that without finance, uh, the, the exchange of transactions would not be existent, especially during this pandemic when we think that cash is trans, uh, transmits uh, the virus, we're seeing that um, a digital transactions has definitely taken over for our economy. Last but not the least, logistics. Without logistics, there's no way for us to deliver our products and services to our customers and our suppliers. And this really creates this strong indicator where if all three pillars of this iron triangle is strong and solidified, we see that the digital economy will grow and grow because we rely on these pillars. Um, congr congratulations to the startup ecosystem uh, last year, 2021. Uh, hallmark year, banner year 2021 was the year of the Series Bs. Um, Kumu actually uh, went even further going towards Series C. And if you notice here, majority are actually in the Iron Triangle. Uh, Kumu is uh, pretty much uh, the, the odd one out um, because Kumu is a great example of how an I the Iron Triangle can benefit a spe specific startup like Kumu or especially in the entertainment space. Now for us in the Gobi Core Philippine Fund, we have over seven startups now, and we believe that any Philippine startup can uh, tackle any types of problems in the Philippines, but also in the region. And you realize that here in the Philippines, we're looking for value-driven startups. Um, we would like to say that we prefer looking at camels over unicorns, mainly because camel startups are resilient, cautious, committed, and customer-focused. Now, why is this important? Um, we're looking for the fundamentals. Any startup we look at, it's important that they understand the problem that they're tackling. They have the right team that could easily pivot if there are any issues of disasters or any problems internally and externally, but also looking for the right customers. Um, I, I think that's very, very important because camels can last long in the desert where unicorns pretty much are, are mythical and hard to find. Interestingly enough, um, when, we, when we created this report, we saw 
the increase of female entrepreneurs in the fray. So now, uh, before 20, uh, 2015, we would see one female, uh, female founder to five male founders. And that's drastically changed whereby seeing that it's now one is to two. And it's very exciting because, as you know, in the Philippines, being a matriarchal country, we see that female leaders have the exact, uh, exact leadership qualities to lead, especially in this uh, type of playing field. Uh, industry to watch, of course, uh, we do see a lot of adoption outside of the Iron Triangle. As that Iron Triangle expands and expands, it will suck in more industry within it because we do need that Iron Triangle for any other industries. However, we've seen that industries to watch, um, entertainment and crypto gaming might be the hottest thing that are coming out um, for 2022. And we're seeing more. And this is something I want to talk to you guys right now as a deep dive for idea space um, participants. Now, if you notice here, 2017 compared to 2020, the success rate for a startup fundraising uh, towards VCs, fundraising, or just families and friends, you see that um, it's fairly low. We're looking at around 18 to 20% success rate uh, for any startup to actually raise funds based on the amount of funds they're looking for. But that has increased drastically for 2020, 2021, where we're seeing around 20 to 30%. Uh, there are different um, reasons and factors why, mainly because the maturity of startups and the ecosystem, but also the consumer um, external factors that are fairly important to create revenue. Um, now, going back to the Iron Triangle, we'll see that the e-commerce startups in the Philippines, um, you know, um, we're seeing different specialities and different um, areas and business models that people are propping up. Before, it was just... Uh, e-commerce platforms, but now we're seeing fairly uh, niche-driven um, e-commerce platforms. And this is very, very important now more than ever as we look for brand uh, value brand-based um, um, startups that are really looking forward to um, provide better value for, for their consumers rather than, than just doing uh, having a platform that's just providing all products and services. Uh, fintech startups, interestingly enough, we're going to see more, more buy now, uh, pay, la pay later. We're seeing a lot of uh, neo banks, digital banks coming out with the licenses being uh, capped at six for now. But you, as you can see, there's so much uh, investment and in probably one of the most invested uh, um, industry in, the, in this specific startup ecosystem is really the fintech side. And I think it's, it's going to be really exciting once we see more adoption for you know, uh, with when we're talking about the uh, national ID system, that's really bring in the unbanked towards uh, the bank, and this is where the exciting part for fintech is. And of course, logistics. Uh, last mile is fairly important. Trade hailing has been an essential during this time, and so on and so forth. So things have changed. COD has been a game changer and helped really propel um, e-commerce scene in the Philippines. But we'll see more different products and services coming out of the logistics side uh, real soon. And I wanted to end with two slides here is the this idea of how can we see growth visually, right? So as you can see here, um, by specific industries in the startups, um, over the past four or five years, e-commerce has drastically grown. Outside of that, food tech has definitely grown. Majority of them have steadily grown. And this is very exciting because there is a market in the Philippines and that will stay uh, for a long, long time because we are a young market and uh, um, the, this market is right for the taking. I want to flip the table here, but also seeing the difference from 2016, 2017, all the way to 2020 and 2021. You see the changes when it comes to the amount of startups being founded, but also meaning that there are there is an opportunity for a lot of the startups and the consumers finding better better products and services in this region so with that uh, hopefully uh, please do check out the report uh, there's a lot to um, to extract from that and we hope to do more for the service of the startup ecosystem uh, congratulations good luck and hope to see you soon let's keep in touch thank you Thank you.
thank you for that report, Carlo. I'm so glad that we're seeing more and more investments and support given to the startups over the past year. 2021 was indeed the banner year for our community and I'm so excited to see how VCs, accelerators, and even corporate organizations alike can help startup founders like us across the country so we can make a bigger dent in the global ecosystem. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of Idea Spaces Corpsec Attorney June Pilares. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today, sir. Thank you. You know, Oski, Workbean has been very fortunate as well to have received a strategic investment from our Singaporean HR firm to continue to grow our business of providing employer branding as a service to equip companies to tackle the effects of the great resignation and help professionals work where they belong. Seeing the successes of the startups in the Philippines makes me very optimistic that our community is indeed ready for bigger and bolder foreign investments. Wow, congratulations on that milestone and investment cast and the whole work team team. And we've definitely seen a lot of new startups emerging too. They're building solutions, not just for essential industries such as food and healthcare, but also they're starting to tap into markets that can benefit from industrialization, such as the automotive and real estate industries. Sobrang excited ko dito kasi that's exactly what our next two startups are addressing. Instahomes and Pieza are bringing together traditional markets to the digital sphere with their creative solutions. Let's hear what their pitches are. Hello and welcome to Instahomes. The company that aims to bring SME real estate developers into the digital economy. Let's begin with this. Within the pandemic, small to medium real estate developers face an existential threat with 70 to 90% revenue drops, while large players face smaller declines with some like SMDC even growing. This inequality, while made more blatant due to the pandemic, always existed in the industry as it was increasingly dominated by a few real estate giants. These drastic lows are something I experienced firsthand with my family's SME real estate business. This personal impact pushed me and my co-founders to look deeper into the problem and ensure this trend didn't come to define the industry and the country. What we found was that while buyers were shifting to online channels even before the pandemic, but also more rapidly during it, SME developers simply weren't following. In fact, 75% of them in the Philippines still don't have any recognizable presence online. This means no discovery from buyers, no targeted ads, and no easy way for interested buyers to even reach out to them. This drastic statistic showed no signs of changing, as buyers like high upfront cost of digitizing, no experience with digital tools, and a lack of success stopped SME developers from going online. To further pile on the problems, we found that the lack of success for SME developers digitizing is because of buyers not trusting listings from them. Given the amount of online real estate scams, buyers are much more interested in properties from known developers like SM. Existing portals only magnify this problem. Their team finding through tests that they have so little security, we could even list the moon as our property and sell it on a top competitor platform. To meaningfully move SME developers online, the solution needs to be accessible for all developers and secure for property buyers, which fills in the evident gap in both ends. This gap constitutes a huge market opportunity here, as roughly 9% of revenues from developers is spent on sales and marketing. But in the Philippines alone, it is already worth 62 billion pesos every year, and leads to an SOM of about 7 billion pesos. Given this, we launched Instahopes a property portal that helps SME developers sell to a global audience through digitizing their sales and marketing operations. So how do we solve the problems? First, we are affordable with no upfront fees or prioritization charges. This removes the largest buyer that developers face. Next, we use text integration to adapt to the company's lack of digital systems and remove the need for them to upscale. Lastly, we are safe through not allowing independent agents or owners to list. This allows us to improve legal security and build trust for our developers on the platform. Since forming this idea, we've come a long way. With over 1.5% market share, 17 developer partners, and over 150 different unit types, we have developers of all sizes, including small to medium players, nowhere else online, which proves the appeal of our business model. We launched our working product to be familiar and easy to use with an intuitive search engine, SEO-powered listing pages, and an easy inquiry flow that's direct to the developer. Since doing that, we've launched a video call concierge feature 
which vastly improves the house buying experience of OFWs through live video call tours with agents. A guided investing feature that helps buyers find the best investments, even among small players, and even developer dashboards that allow us to onboard new clients in less than five minutes. All of this ensuring that we are ready to scale. Through this, we maximize our business model, which earns the majority of its revenue from the 1% marketing commission we earn when a sale is made from a lead generated on our platform. So here's how we look like among our competitors. We stand alone in being accessible for listings from small players and secure for buyers. From our team, you can see that real estate and software engineering are our fortes. On the business side, I've been in real estate for years and negotiated multi-million dollar deals. But Camps is a design whiz that has developed over 20 different tech products for well-known startups. On the dev side, Alec and Danny have won national coding competitions and gotten hired by tech chat, such as Activision Blizzard and ByteDance. We are confident that we're the team for the job. Moving forward, we expect to prove our concept and earn good revenue this quarter before really starting to get funding and beginning to scale. By the end of Q1, we expect to have 4 billion pesos in GMV, 350 listings, 2% of the market, and 80,000 pesos in revenue. To further grow, however, we'd be interested to get referrals to local real estate developers and partnerships with any members or groups involved in the OFW community. We'd also love to begin looking at pre-seed round funding options. Given your help would allow us to ensure that we are able to fulfill our mission, bring SME developers online and make sure the future of real estate is as accessible and as secure as possible. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Johnny Kassin Pasquale, the CEO of Piazza, and we revolutionized the automotive retail industry. Just to give you the story behind Piazza, my family is in the automotive industry for 30 years. And when I've saved enough money from my digital marketing job, I was able to put up my own motor shop at the age of 23. After a few years, I had to sell it, realizing that it was very tedious, manual, and slow to grow. A few years later, the pandemic struck. I saw the struggle in my parents' businesses. So I decided to put my skills into good use. I started helping them sell online and I saw their sales double. Now it seems that the problem of my parents are also the problem of most automotive retail businesses in the Philippines. Upon doing some interviews, surveys and research, we found out the top three challenges of automotive aftermarket merchants. Most of these merchants have limited or no online presence at all. For others, it's just too much of a hassle for them to hire another manpower to handle online stores. And lastly, most of the owners are 50 years old and above and are digitally challenged, just like my parents. We all know how huge the automotive industry in the Philippines is. And yet, with the challenges here, we feel that they are the most underserved. The automotive industry is worth 300.4 billion in 2017 and is expected to increase by 150% in 2022. What we want to target and help are the retail stores of automotive parts, which is at 1.96 billion worth. Here's the reality when it comes to expenses in owning a car. 30% of your money is spent on the car purchase alone. However, for the first year, up to 10 years, 70% of your expenses would have to be spent on maintenance and upgrades. Let's say you purchase a car at 1 million and 20,000 pesos. The upgrades and maintenance will cost 3.4 million. And that's why with the increasing demand of automotive aftermarket, while remaining underserved, we came up with a solution. Our solution is Piazza. The go-to marketplace for auto parts that helps automotive retail businesses connect their offline stores to different e-commerce channels using an all-in-one platform, making it convenient for them to increase their sales and grow their business faster. First, we've built an exclusive app for Piazza merchants to make their product uploads easy in just three steps. The scan the barcode, add information, and confirm. Once they scanned and successfully added an item, it's instantly uploaded to Piazza inventory, ready to sell. 
Also, with the power of our centralized dashboard, their products uploaded to Piazza are easily synchronized to different e-commerce platforms through omnichannel system, resulting to multiple storefronts in an instant, generating higher revenue. To deliver quality solutions to our merchants and distributors, Piazza has verified suppliers, curated information with the help of technology. We're also backed by a team of automotive experts to deliver customer satisfaction meant to grow our clients' customer base and profit. Piazza is also the only marketplace for auto parts that has interconnectivity and automotive focus. For attraction, we were able to accumulate 1 million and 20,000 pesos gross revenue and we're at 40% month on month growth and we're growing. By December of 2022, we expect to generate about 15 million gross sales. Piazza has partnered up with various automotive retail vendors and merchants. In total, we have partnered up with over 50 branches nationwide. Currently, we have a total of 5,000 products across all our channels. As for our pricing model, we offer 10% commission fee for merchants and 20 to 30% commission fee for distributors. As for our business roadmap, we plan to scale our revenue, upgrade and apply machine learning and AI, and expand to racing in luxury categories in 2024. Let me introduce you to the Piazza team. As the CEO of Piazza, I have years of experience in automotive stores and years of experience as a digital marketing strategist. My co-founder has years of experience in design and publishing, as well as web solutions. Here are the people that complete our Piazza team. Our ask is 100,000 USD in the form of post money safe with a 20% discount and a valuation cap of 1 million USD. We currently have 30,000 USD on a signed term sheet. That's all guys, thank you so much. And together, let's reimagine the auto industry's future today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Insta Homes and Piazza team. Great strides in innovation in the real estate and automotive space naman talaga. And I'm so excited where these founders will take their companies next. For now, I would like to request the founders and representatives of Insta Homes and Piazza to please turn on your cameras and join us here on the virtual stage. Yeah, let's say hi to the audience. Hi everyone, I'm Camps, and on behalf of Insta Homes, Piazza, and the whole cohort, I'd like to say thank you for being here and hearing us. Some may say we're crazy for disrupting traditional industries that are far older than us, but every day we remind ourselves that no important innovation comes from just accepting what is. Innovation comes in a vision of what should be and what will be. This is the fuel that keeps us going as startups, fueled further with support from people like you. Together, let's create the future our way. Cheers to us. I love it so much. Nice to see you, Camille, and congratulations. Now, if you want to learn more about them and the rest of the startups that we just heard today from Cohort 9, you can check out their booths this evening at 6 p.m. at the Startup PH Metaverse on Gather Town. Wait lang, wait lang, Castle. Could you tell me more about this Gather Town? I think I heard it from you earlier, but I'm not particularly sure where or what that is. Paano ba yan? Where it is, is in your browser. <laughs> but okay. Gather Town is an online hangout space where people can create their own avatars, explore virtual spaces that are super cool looking, and interact with people real time. Isipin mo siya as a networking meets your eight your favorite 8-bit video game na parang Super Mario. And so you're telling me that I can create my own character and it will feel as if I'm in a video game. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, ideas huh? will be there too. So for our guests who want to know more about the startup support programs available for you, today is your chance to learn more about it. So please do not miss this opportunity and we'll all see you in the metaverse. 
Ayan, so we'll see you there later. And if you are also interested in becoming a mentor or a partner, you may approach any of the idea space representatives. There's, they are always in the lookout for more partners. So moving on, who do we have next na bakas? Ayan, so the next three startups have been making waves and creating their own spin on the on e-commerce platforms. Diba? Like earlier, Carlos said, this this is the iron part of the iron triangle. So this is really exciting to hear. And you won't want to miss the next three startups that are paving the way for more SMEs to keep up and thrive digitally. So let's all welcome, without further ado, Oh My Genie, Peddler, and Dirtbag. Hi, I'm Carl Kessner, CEO and CTO of OMG Oh My Genie. OMG is ultra-fast 30-minute delivery for your online store. So let me begin with a true story. My mama's been going on and on about air fryers. And we love our mamas, right? So we decided to order one online last 12-12 and give it to her on Christmas. Long story short, it arrived 20 days after. On New Year's Day, too late for Christmas. Obviously, she wasn't happy. On the upside, it, it arrived. But most people aren't as forgiving. That's why 70% of online business are lost because of long delivery times and high shipping costs. Financially, that's 875 billion pesos online each year. Clearly, a huge problem that needs to be addressed. Most relevant today when the industry is evolving, when businesses have to adapt as customer behavior rapidly shifts from offline to online or face extinction. But having an online store isn't enough. Even before the pandemic, fulfillment and shipping remained a challenge in Southeast Asia, especially in the Philippines. And with the accelerated adoption of e-commerce, businesses have opened several online sales channels yet struggled to keep up with the customer's new requirements of fast and free shipping. In the Philippines, a centralized distribution model means that Visayas and Mindanao could receive orders up to 14 days or more. Sadly, this is our reality. We currently operate in Cebu, but our short-term target is to fix delivery for these underserved regions. A 65 billion peso addressable market which could grow by 400% in 2025 to 260 billion pesos. For online businesses, our solution aims to decentralize fulfillment by increasing distribution points without increasing fixed cost commitments so they can ship closest to the customer and reduce losses online. Our technology makes it possible for businesses to transform existing store outlets into mini fulfillment hubs and get their products to their customers ultra fast, same day in as fast as 30 minutes, instead of shipping from a central warehouse from across the country. What if mama's air fryer was just sitting in a store near us? Then it would have arrived in time for Christmas. For our partners, OMG Ultra Fast is a simple four-step process. Step one, integration, allows businesses to connect their offline and online channels with OMG. Step two, automation, orchestrates the whole fulfillment process so that new online orders are automatically routed to an available store outlet closest to the customer. Step three, assembly, where the store is notified and uses our app to pick and pack the order. And step four, where we pick and deliver the order to the customer. For our partners, this means they can now efficiently scale their online operations. We simplify fulfillment by up to 65%. We bring shipping costs down by 55%. Their slow-moving inventory in stores are now cash, and the overall fulfillment and shipping time is up to 14 times faster. Customers' expectations of fast and free shipping are now met. In the past months, we have created strategic partnerships and are heavily integrated with SM's daily operations. This year, we hope to create significant traction as we continue to roll out our product to new brand partners like Herschel and the Travel Club. We earn from delivery fees and transaction fees. Margins are at 29.3%, and our goal by the end of 12 months is to reach 300,000 deliveries per month across Vismin, translating to around 25 million pesos monthly revenue. 
We have an awesome team. I was CEO of retail for more than 10 years. Anna developed an e-learning system that served 28 countries worldwide. And Enrique is a godsend marketing guy from Northwood University, Texas. Our vision is to create 30 minute cities where everyone can get what they need within minutes. As others work to reduce delivery times from several days to one day, we'll be hard at work to master same day to ultra fast immediate delivery. For businesses who believe that time is gold, we'd love to enable your online operations. And for those who believe in what we do, professionals, partners, investors, we'd love to build the future with you. Life is too short. Let's do things ultra fast. Thank you for your time and hope to talk with you soon. Hi, I'm Aiko Reyes from Peddler. We are doing digital and financial inclusions for micro and small businesses. We created a free POS and digital bookkeeping app to help micro and small businesses in the Philippines to manage their operations efficiently and earn more. There are over 20 million micro and small businesses in the Philippines that contributes 36% of Philippines GDP, yet they are broadly fragmented, inefficient, and rudimentary. Due to pandemic, they are heavily impacted and there is an urgent need for digitalization to ensure operational efficiency and business recovery. The total impact of COVID-19 have created 78% decline in sales, 68% cash shortage, and 43% temporary closure. The top three pain points of our target users are manual inventory tracking, credit visibility, margin, profit, and cash. My Lola owns a Sari Sari store. She is 87 years old and doing this as her pastime. She does not monitor her inventory, probably doesn't know her cost per product, and uses pen and paper to record her sales. At the end of the day, when she gets 500 pesos, she will think that her Sari Sari store is doing great, running smoothly, without even knowing her actual cost. So, since she started, up to now, her Sari Sari store has been getting smaller. But imagine millions of Filipinos who owns a business and doing the same thing, which is their primary source of income. By the end of the month, can they still buy stocks to replenish their inventory or will they close down, right? And the last one is they don't have access to capital. So their business is stagnant with no room for growth or improvement. Traditional or digital POS are way too expensive or too complicated for them, which resulted to low technical adoption. That is why we created Peddler, an OS like POS app made and designed to manage simple bookkeeping and inventory management for micro and small businesses. It has an easy to use and straightforward user interface, two click upload process, and we have an easy to read financial reports. Even if they're not an accountant, they can better understand their business cash flows. We have a user who said that it's easy for her to monitor her sales and expenses now with Peddler app. Even though she is at negative because her business expenses are so high, she knows what to do next. It also comes with digital ledgers and a storefront. We have our very famous credit ledger because it has an SMS credit reminders, payment ledger, cash ledger, and online selling made easy. All of our users has their own store links that they can share on all social media platforms. Our users love us. We did not only create a free POS app, but we also created a very active community group on Facebook. We are at 22,000 members now. Our old users are helping our new users to get onboarded with Peddler app. It is so fun, inspiring, and motivating to watch them. Peddler is led by entrepreneurs and repeat startup founders with proven track record in finance and operations. We have our CEO, Nal Laigo. He's a repeat startup founder that led his previous startup to profitability and managed to scale to 18 cities in the Philippines. He is also a corporate digital transformation lead and a global corporate talent. And for the operations side, I am Aika Reyes. I am a serial entrepreneur who built profitable startups, manage over 300 real estate properties, manage over 100 employees, and serve over 50,000 guests. Our team is comprised with local talents from the countryside. We have Nelson Batan Jr., our founding developer, Queenie Rayos, finance director, Mel Francis Caspar Sapara, mobile developer, and John Ray Franco, UI UX developer. 
we have merchants on 900 plus cities and municipalities across Philippines, where top merchant is the Sari Sari Store. We are on a mission to equip 1 million micro and small businesses in the Philippines to break through financial literacy and help them manage their operations efficiently. Help us. Help us on our mission. Thank you. Download Peddler app now. Hello, my name is Richard, the chief launderer of Dirtbag. Easy laundry everywhere for everyone. We need your help. A year ago, Jack and Jill went up the hill and decided to venture into the laundry business. That's after joining the workshop on how to start a laundry business, sponsored by the suppliers themselves. Like most of the first time owners, they were shown a very promising business model. A few months later, they became part of this group. What could possibly go wrong? That's money down the drain, and that hurts. It's not just about infrastructure, it's not just about interior design, and it's not just about location. It's understanding supply and demand, and that is the problem. They just don't match. There are more than 4,000 laundry shops in the Philippines, more than enough to serve the 4 million households of the country. Yet only 30% of these households use these services. This is just sad. On the one hand, the business wants to profit, while on the other, the customer wants it convenient and cheap. But convenience comes with a price. As a result, 70% of the market would rather do it at home. Is it really worth the time and effort? If no one uses the service because it's expensive, tedious, or no access at all, then you're killing the business. Our solution is to partner with these existing laundry shops and tap on their spare capacities. While we help them with the sales, we're giving the customers reasons to buy. But how? In a single swipe, customer has a guaranteed booking wherever he is in the city, paying the same price, and that's no premium. Dirtbag then consolidates all orders, distribute equitably to the shops, gets fulfilled, and delivered the very next day back to the customer. All check for the customer, and all check for the business. Everybody happy. Our routing automation allows customer to book easily in just one swipe. Doesn't matter which part of the city you are, we will come. Doesn't matter how far you are from the city proper, you pay the same. That's next level convenience. And no, we are not just a mobile app and we are not a marketplace. It's laundry, it's dirty. You don't have to browse like Netflix for that. All you ever needed is just one swipe. That's why customers love us. We almost tripled our sales in 2021 compared to the previous year. And yes, you're right. Both were pandemic years. While most are shutting down operations, we continued serving customers. As a result, we helped reopen the doors of some businesses. And the business model is simple. We take 20% on sales, plus the transport and other fees we collect from the customers. And we are highly competitive. We compete both in pricing and in coverage. Among the other players in the industry, we're the only ones who can sustain a citywide coverage while maintaining market price. Anyone can put up a shop. The questions are, are you getting enough market share to sustain? Can you grant the customer's wishes of an affordable and convenient service? Well, we do, and we are here to help. We have a very diverse team in the fields of logistics, business, operations, and software development. I used to head the entire fleet and national expansion of Ninja Van Philippines before moving to Oyo Hotels as head of business development in Visayas and in Mindanao. Ren, he was with me in Ninja Van, heading Mindanao operations before moving to Food Panda in Davao. Kim, she's an expert in analytics and research. If we're talking data, let's talk to Kim. Both Winlove and RG have a combined experience of 20 years in, in software development. And we are looking to raise 10 million pesos to fund our business expansion plans and ready our tech for scalability. 
We're currently at Cagayan de Oro and we're looking to expand in the Davao City, Cebu, Bacolod, and Iloilo before moving to Metro Manila in the next 12 months. We all aim to help. A lot more businesses need help and Dirtbag can be the answer. Let's make it accessible everywhere. Let's make it affordable for everyone. Help us help the Jacks and Jills not to break their crowns and not to tumble after. We have done it then and continue, we will. Thank you very much. Once again, that's Oh My Jimmy, Peddler, and Dirtbag. Thank you, Carl, Aiko, and Richard. May we please call your team on the virtual stage, please, and say hello to the audience. Natin. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Enabling MSME participation in the digital economy has been made more accessible and inclusive in the Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao regions. Tech startups from different parts of the country are able to bring locally relevant and positive solutions for SMEs and their end users. There's Peddler that provides a POS that supports the micro and small businesses so they can track their growth and improve their daily operations. Dirtbag bridges laundry shop owners with customers who would rather have their laundry picked up and delivered. And us at Oh My Genie, we have been empowering retail brands and businesses of any size to deliver online orders to their customers in as fast as 30 minutes. So to the audience, spread the word about our Philippine-made tech startups. Ugdaghang salamat, idea space, in making all of us become part in nation building for future our way. Ayan, daghang salamat. Unfortunately, no, the founders of Peddler are experiencing some internet issues, so I believe they're not able to turn on their camera. And happens to everyone. Nonetheless, great job guys and congratulations. Again, we're thrilled to have more startups from outside the Metro Manila join us. And it's actually a first for the Idea Space Acceleration Program to have these many participants from the Visayas and Mindanao regions. And that indicates, Kaz, no, that we may see a rise of more startup cities across the Philippines. So exciting, no? I can't wait. It's really exciting. <clears throat> Alam mo, Oski, the pitches, I've been listening to every single pitch intently and they're getting really more and more interesting, solving real problems, getting real traction, getting revenue. And all of them are addressing critical pain points talaga in the nation today. Be it digital bookkeeping for SMEs, cultivating a healthier lifestyle from a from our homes or finding better solutions for HR teams across the country. And of course, laundry. My biggest problem ever living in a condominium, the right? So these startups are putting in the work to build the future their way. It's really inspiring to witness all of these pitches tonight. Yeah, you're definitely right about that, Kaz. But we're not done yet. The last set of startups are working hard to solve the gaps in our education system. I'm personally intrigued by these solutions and I'm already thinking about how I can personally integrate this into my life. So here they are. Let's welcome Pick a Talk, Circular Raccoon, and Mad Courses. Hi, I'm Yuma Roa and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Pick a Talk. Have you ever been misunderstood? And isn't it frustrating? How much more if you aren't able to verbally explain yourself in a world where verbal communication is the norm? Well, that is the reality of people with complex communication needs. Though I myself have not experienced it to that extent, my sister has. Leia has autism and can only utter a few words. Luckily, she came up with the brilliant idea of communicating with us by searching images on Google. This became the inspiration for Pickathon. But before this, her disability made it difficult for us to communicate with her, which resulted in a lot of misunderstandings, miscommunication, and temper tantrums. And it's not just my sister. About 1 in 160 children are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. 
Although not all of them are speech impaired, 40% do not speak, while 25 to 30% can only utter a few words. Other disabilities can affect communication as well, such as learning disabilities, intellectual disabilities, and cerebral palsy. In the school year 2016 to 2017, about 64,000 students with these disabilities were enrolled in special education schools and centers, and 47,000 of which were in elementary. Communication methods called Augmentative and Alternative Communication, or AAC, have been developed to address this issue, but these have their own disadvantages. Hand gestures can be difficult to decipher, which can be confusing and time-consuming. Communication boards get bigger and heavier as the user's language develops, making it difficult to carry around anywhere. And speech generating devices or apps can be very expensive, especially for the average Filipino family. So we came up with a solution that addresses these disadvantages by making it easy to use, customizable, and affordable. Introducing Picatalk, giving the voice to the voiceless through smartphones and pictures. Picatalk is a high-tech augmentative and alternative communication application that is personalized for each user. It has a parent mode, which allows parents to customize by uploading and deleting words as their child's language develops. A child mode allows the children to identify words using pictures and automatically create a sentence for them, which is then produced into speech output to emulate a natural conversation. In our efforts to ensure proper development of pick up we have collaborated with several speech language pathologists and special education teachers across the country. They have helped us understand what AAC is and how children with complex communication needs will be using them for the rest of their lives. So far, we have met with 10 spe speech language pathologists and 16 special education teachers who have not only provided us feedback, but testers as well. We currently have 50 active users who have Picatalk installed on their Android devices. In comparison with other existing apps, Picatalk not only has the basics of AAC, but we also offer cloud storage, sentence generation, and a seamless user experience at an affordable price. This year, we plan to partner with up to 50 SOP clinics who will then introduce Picatalk to the right clients. In doing so, we hope to gain up to 500 users from these partnerships. And while we are acquiring these partnerships with end users, we will continue to improve Picatalk by adding more features that will promote language development. So how can you help us? We are looking to raise a pre-seed funding for operational capital for the next five years. We are also looking to hire interns whose skills and experience will complement our team. And we would also like to partner with not just SLP clinics, but also with governmental organizations such as DepEd and DSWD, and non-governmental organizations such as the Philippine Accessible Disability Services Incorporated and other private institutions. Our team is composed of developers, an SLP in training, and an aspiring entrepreneur. And together, we aim to create an impact on society by developing technology that improves the lives of those who need it the most, like my sister Leia and other nonverbal children with special needs. And with Pika Talk, they can now speak with pics. Hello, I'm Marisa Puay, co-founder and CEO of Circular Coon, and we offer trash panda recoverable waste collection. We aim to be the vehicle of a recovery conscious society where nothing goes to waste. So in a recovery conscious society, people know that waste must be recovered in order to conserve finite resources that we have, and that is how we will become a sustainable society. And with the targets of the sustainable development goals that we have yet to hit as an entire world population, we have different questions in mind that form when trying to become sustainable, not only at home, but also in our workplace. 
questions like, how do I do it? How do I know I'm doing it right? How do I know if I have actual progress? And what's in it for me if I start doing it? So we at Circular Raccoon have come up with a solution for you that will make it more convenient and easier to start becoming more sustainable. Trash Panda Recoverable Waste Collection, where you can recover, track, and earn. Recover value from clean and sorted waste items, not only at home, but also in the workplace. And we can also help you to track the statistics of waste collection. And you can also earn cash back from the sale of the items to waste buyers. So as for the collection from either at home or from the business, so all items that are deemed acceptable for collection are weighed and collected so that these can be repackaged for delivery to waste buyers for recycling. The technology we've come up with is Trash Panda for mobile, which is also available as a web app. And this is available for households looking to book collection services from their homes. We also have come up with Trash Panda Waste Space, which can be utilized for businesses that are looking to monitor their business-wide statistics of waste collection. So in terms of the statistics, we monitor not only the types of waste and the total waste recovered, but also the climate impacts that they have when it comes to recovering the waste in terms of the greenhouse gas emissions that have been reduced in operations. Currently, we offer the one-time booking priced at 150 pesos per booking for a maximum of 10 kilograms, but our new service for businesses includes the Trash Panda Waste Space technology, and for a coverage of 500 kilograms, we price this service at around 5,000 pesos per month. So looking at the potential of servicing the Philippine market with a value of 953 billion pesos, we are looking to start by servicing a population with immediate access with a value of 3.7 billion pesos, and this population is located within the National Capital Region and Rizal Province. So for the past year, of doing trash panda collection with my partner, we have been able to service 18 cities within the Philippines and we have collected 15 tons for recovery, meaning to say these are 15 tons of waste that have been diverted from the landfills. Out of that, our total revenue has amounted to 175,000 pesos so far. Now, Trash Panda has an edge over all its competitors by being the holistic solution that integrates all the different kinds of services and technology that they each specialize in and have it all within one package. As for our team composition, there are two of us in the core team, and together we have 20 years of collective experience in sustainable urban development and technology, making us qualified to be able to bring these solutions forward. So with that said, we are looking to raise our seed ground funding so that we may be able to reach a wider clientele in terms of the large businesses in need of the sustainability solution. And with that, if your business needs to become more sustainable and more green and you don't know where to start, try Trash Panda. You may contact us for more details. Thank you. My name is Tom Graham, the co-founder of Mad Courses. Today, I will share how we can connect classrooms to communities and transform how we teach about sustainability around the world. Sustainability is the number one challenge facing the world both today and into the future, and it is young people who are driving the sense of urgency around these issues. Schools and universities need to connect to students to the real world beyond the classroom, while companies, in order to compete, need to show their workforce as well as their investors, that their business takes these issues seriously. Investing in innovative solutions to these challenges will define our future. Our MAD response combines technology and a passion for education with our growing global network of educators and social entrepreneurs. 
Our solution is to harness the power of technology to connect students directly to communities through gamified video courses, which enable them to discover global issues through a local community perspective. Here's how it works. Students get to choose the topic they are interested in, form teams and go on an exciting learning adventure where they choose who to speak to and what questions to ask while responding to prompts. Finally, there's an option of a live interaction with the community at the end. Let's take a look for ourselves. Hey guys, my name is Raf. I'm a social entrepreneur in the Philippines. Welcome to Zambales. Before we start, I would like to know what brings you to this adventure? Let's imagine that I'm interested to learn about social entrepreneurship. You've come to the right place. Today, we're going to meet an indigenous tribe that I've had the privilege of getting to know over the last seven years. As I mentioned, the experience is gamified, so we can both challenge RAF or challenge the community, and of course, be challenged ourselves. I've been advised that I have to take a shot of vinegar for this scene. But the most important aspect of the experience is the chance to interact with community members. Our approach is getting very positive feedback from our 20 plus partners around the globe, including France, Singapore, and of course, the Philippines. We will scale with relatively low fixed costs thanks to our CSR partnership with Wirewax, a global leader in interactive video content, which was recently acquired by Vimeo. They are offering free of charge access to their interactive video technology because they believe in our mission. From this starting point, there are no limits to whom we can partner with to create courses and adapt them to different audiences. Finally, we will actively be seeking additional revenue streams through VR integration, travel experiences and other consulting services to help corporations align with ESG guidelines. Our business model focuses on B2B as this is the most cost efficient way to scale. Based on our current track record, schools and universities are willing to pay between $1,200 and $25,000 per year to partner with us. Meanwhile, we reach less well-resourced schools thanks to our collaboration with corporations who sponsor students and help create new courses, while of course using the courses to educate their own employees. Our conversations so far show that what we are doing is quite unique and certainly adds value to their existing curriculum, especially the combination of interactive video and live interaction. Raf and I have both been business partners since 2015 when we set up a social enterprise, Mad Travel, which became one of the pioneers of sustainable tourism in the Philippines. Suji, an experienced international school teacher, joined our team in 2019. We're raising 260,000 US dollars. As corporations will sponsor the creation of new adventures, your investment will focus on engaging people in the educational space, as well as growing an effective sales and marketing team. Our revenue since we pivoted in July 2020 has been 130,000 US dollars through building partnerships and creating more adventures, as well as integrating VR in the future. We expect to be a multi-million dollar company within five years. Finally, I'll end with four good reasons to support our mission. First of all, we offer profit margins of around 70% in the fast growing sectors of online learning and sustainability. Second, there are multiple revenue streams for the future, including virtual reality and travel. But most importantly, I'll revert back to the main reason we exist as a company in the first place. Through your support, we can empower communities as educators, not simply as beneficiaries, as they earn through the courses we create. Last but not least, we can inspire thousands of students around the world to help us solve the problems of tomorrow. Thank you for listening. I very much look forward to your feedback. Wow, Grave, those innovations are so mind blowing. And thank you once again, Pick a Talk, Circular Raccoon, and Mad Courses. Now, let's see you up here on the virtual stage. Hi. Hi everyone, thank you. And um, we're very privileged and um, very grateful to have this opportunity to repitch. Um, coming from you know, a very difficult 2020, uh, it's as if we were given the chance to be a phoenix and to uh, give birth or rebirth to 
uh, the vision that we started with, which was to really create uh, connections with communities and to hopefully change their lives uh, while we change ours in the city. And so we hope that um, you guys continue to support us and um, we'd love to collaborate with anyone and uh, just have a chat so that uh, we can see where we can push this forward because the world needs us and it needs everyone, lifelong learners and students to innovate and to live more sustainable lives. Thank you. Grabe, ayan. You guys are all amazing. Grabe, wow. This has been such an exciting and informative afternoon and I hope that you were all inspired by today's pitches. Yes, I definitely am and I'm pretty sure mamaya hahabuling ko sila together. <laughs> that wraps up today's pitches but Demo Day isn't over yet. We'll still have a networking session and an after-party event on Gather Town once we wrap up the program's closing remarks. That's right, Cass. So if you're interested in meeting the startup founders and forging new connections or talking about anything and everything startup related, make sure you join us in the after party. We'll be flashing the details on the screen now. There you have it. You'll definitely find me in Gather after the program with my alter ego, Cassiopeia. <laughs> you know, Cassie? <laughs> <Meron na. laughs> uh oh, maga, I'm going to turn into my drag self later on. But, you know, after hearing today's pitches, it's clear these startups are creating their vision for the future that they want to live in today their way. And this is what we exactly need about to navigate the new normal and beyond. And as a special treat for everyone here today, we have one more surprise up our sleeves from one of my favorite people in the community. Wow, sino kaya yan, no? Here to share his thoughts and special message to Cohort 9 is Joseph Worker, founder of Humble Sustainability and a fellow graduate from Cohort 8 of the Idea Space Accelerator Program. Let's all give him a warm round of applause. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Ako ay si Joseph, taga UK ako. Pero nakitira ako sa Pilipinas walang taon na. Mahal ko ang Pilipinas at mahal ko demo day ng idea space. My apologies for my accent, but I had to give it a try. So for those that don't know me, I'm Joseph. As I said, I was in batch eight of Idea Space with a circular economy startup called Humble. And this is such a privilege. I'm still in shock that I've been asked to do this. So thank you so much for the trust. I really hope that I don't let you down. So a tiny bit about me, uh, other than Humble, I'm also the managing director of Penn Brothers. I advise a couple of startups here uh, and I've had the honor of being a mentor for batch nine. And it's amazing that you're putting up with me for two years in a row. I'm not quite sure what you did wrong to deserve that, but thank you. The story of how we got into idea space is, uh, is a funny one. I was having uh, breakfast, luckily, with Sam Jean Blanc, the previous lead for Google in the Philippines. And he asked me what I was doing outside of Penn Brothers. And I quite shyly told him about this idea we had for circular living. And he said, you have to go and I apply for idea space. So I said, okay, why not? Of course, the lead for Google tells you to apply for something, you figure it out later, right? And you just do it. We said goodbye, I went and saw the application link and it said seven hours until the deadline. I thought seven hours to create an application, a business plan and just everything, a concept, why not? Let's give it a go. So we pulled an all-nighter and just built it from scratch. And uh, look, three months later, we're in the most meaningful learning experience of our lives. And two years later, here we are, I'm speaking to you as a proud idea space graduate and mentor. It's quite funny how things work out when you think about them. So look, things are difficult in the world right now. And these past two years have been anything but predictable since that breakfast. And COVID has been claiming lives, claiming people's mental health, businesses, livelihood. Closer to home, typhoons continue to cause devastation. And I send my love and best wishes to everyone who is struggling or who has loved ones who have struggled. 
And I sincerely hope right now everyone is safe and you're coping the best that you can during these difficult times. We've learned things from this experience, I think. The pandemic has meant we needed to adapt more than ever. I remember something that Potch from Automart said in his speech during my demo day last year. He was speaking out to potential investors and said, you will probably never meet more resilient and tough founders than this year's batch. And that really stuck out to me and I still remember it. And I, I think it's worth repeating. As many of us in batch eight, we built solutions just before the pandemic hit or even as it was developing. But batch nine have had to build something from scratch in a world completely covered in uncertainty. Now that is incredible. The need to adapt and the need to be resilient, these also happen to be two strengths that Filipinos possess to such an inspiring degree that it never ceases to amaze me. The best talent in the world, I will never change my mind about that. And another thing about situations like a pandemic is that true innovation is born from the most difficult of times. It's a fact. Unicorns built during the recessions over the years, I'll name a couple. Netflix, Airbnb, Microsoft, Disney. Not bad, hey? I wonder which of this year's cohort we will be speaking of in the same breath as that in 10 to 20 years time. Ask yourself, why not? It's time to congratulate this year's cohorts. I've been lucky enough to get to know some of you and the solutions that you have built. And the standard is amazing. And what is more important though, in my eyes, is that there is a real sense of unity and humility in this group, which is so imperative. I'd also like to personally shout out and congratulate all those who have not made it to the demo day, because you'll always be part of the idea space community and well done for your journey. For cohort nine founders, as you go towards the rest of your journey, I would advise you to continue supporting each other. You'll continue to go through similar challenges. You'll have strengths where the others have weaknesses and vice versa. So use that to your advantage and share your wisdom with others. I think it begins with giving and then the help will follow. The other thing I would humbly advise is to utilize the support from Idea Space as much as you can. I've personally benefited a great deal from the continued support from Idea Space, which does not stop after demo day. So during the accelerator itself, we created our foundation, but afterwards we had, and we still have consistent advice and support, but more importantly, long lasting and meaningful relationships. I think while we're in the mood for congratulations and thank yous and all this positivity, here's a message of sincere gratitude to the Idea Space team, the mentors, we have inspiration to keep going on this crazy journey of being a founder because of your support. And to those investors who take out their you know, crazy time from their schedules to support Ideaspace and the founders, a sincere thank you. I'm sure you have an eye already on cohort nine, so you don't need me to encourage you. My favorite quote, I'm not one for quotes, but I will now, about entrepreneurship is this, an entrepreneur is someone who jumps off a cliff and builds a plane on the way down. That's Reid Hoffman from LinkedIn. Now, I think every founder in the world can identify with that. But for you now as graduates of the Ideaspace program and welcomed into the community as cohort nine founders, you have still jumped off a cliff, you're still building a plane, but the difference is that you have hundreds of others who are flying through the air with you. Some with planes half built, some nearly fully built, all willing to help you build the beginning of yours and keep you flying. I love this year's theme, the future our way. And the Philippine startup ecosystem right now is just booming. We are surrounded by game changers, Kumu, Great Deals, and all the other superstars serving as an inspiration to the rest of us every day. Now I'm mentioning this because this is the time that people are looking at the Philippines more than ever. And you have hit the jackpot when it comes to timing. What a time to be a founder in the Philippines. Stay humble, but dream big. Now I must wrap up by saying thank you to this year's cohort and everyone who supports Idea Space. But I'd like to end by sending sincere love to everyone watching at home. Things are indeed difficult and we are surrounded by uncertainty. But I genuinely believe that there is light at the end of the tunnel and the future is extremely bright. We must continue to be kind and to live with humility in our hearts. If we all do this and stay together, what a future we have ahead of us. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat.
Thank you so much, Joseph, for that heartfelt message. You know, this is the first time I'm hearing about his application journey to idea space. So that was super interesting. But more than that, thank you for rallying this cohort and the previous cohorts to become to work together to become household conversations in the future. Your positivity, your humility, and your humor is truly contagious. And I look forward to seeing the planes that we all build together as we jump off the cliffs that we've chosen for ourselves. Definitely agree on that, Cass. Finally, before we close this program, we would like to call on Idea Space Executive Director, Katrina Rausachan, to say a few words. Amazing. Um, wow. I, I do have the honor of closing today's activity. I hope all of you were just as impressed as I was by the 14 startups that presented in at the Idea Space 9th cohort um, demo day. So demo days really are a huge time for celebration. We're so proud of them. But, you know, as much as we're celebrating them today, this is also really just the beginning of their startup journeys. So we're so excited for what's next. Um, as this ninth demo day comes to a close, I do want to once again thank our amazing mentors. Um, I won't name all of you today, but you know who you are. Um, the people that have spoken at our workshops and their experts that our startups have consulted. Of course, everyone that also helped us out in the selection process this year, um, including our judges from the 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 group and also um you know in the whole startup community that helped us you know find these um amazing startups that we're working with and of course last but not the least i do want to thank our teammates um august aya and alwin that have been closely working with the startups in the past couple of months so really everyone from our board to our crew to really everyone that supported us our startups and played a role in this journey, big or small, you know, a huge thank you to all of you. Um, we've made it to the end. We've made it to the demo day. But again, it's really just the beginning. And we'll, we, we will be continuing to work together um, in helping our startup communities and our startups grow. So, you know, you all of you make what we do here at Idea Space possible. So we could not have done this ourselves. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to recap again how proud we are of this cohort and their achievements. You know, it has still been a tough year. You know, everything in this batch has still been in this virtual world experience from the planning to the boot camp all the way to, you know, the demo day as we finish. But nonetheless, just in this last six months, you know, like our startups have raised over 45 million pesos, close to a million dollars in investments. They generated over 10 million pesos in revenue and created close to 90 jobs. So again, what an amazing accomplishment in spite of all of these challenges in such a short amount of time. I also kind of want to quickly shout out, this has been one of our most diverse batches. Six out of the 14 startups, actually not based in Metro Manila. So, um, you know, you know, again, maybe a blessing that's provided by um, the, the circumstances we find ourselves in. And of course, you know, my personal kind of thing that I'm very proud of, like half the startups, again, had female co-founders. So, you know, go startup be nice. But, you know, again, one of the most diverse, interesting, and still engaged some batches that we've had this year. And we're only looking forward to what's coming next. So... We were one of the very first startup incubators in the country when we started nine batches ago. And, you know, in the past decade, we've really been working hard towards championing the growth of our startup ecosystem. And this is a continuation of that, you know, like in terms, you know, in spite of everything, we're continuing to continue to you know, build and grow um, together with our startups. And you really do make us very, very proud. Um, all of our startups that we've worked with through the years, you know, really embody the core values that we stand for. The, these are, you know, passion, collaboration, creativity, excellence, but 
most of all, really, at the end of the day, it's about founders helping founders and giving back, you know, giving back to the community, contributing to nation building through the solutions, through the communities, through the impact that we make. And, you know, our founders, you know, the startups that you're creating, you guys will define and create the future. In fact, this is the entire theme of our ninth cohort, right? It's the future our way. And, you know, borrowing from our founders' words, actually, you know, like we're working towards using tech really, right? And more tech forward, innovative nation and country where, you know, taking the problems of today, like control of today, right? In a way, you know, building solutions today to map out, define, shape the future that we want to see. And in spite of everything that we might be hearing, right? Like the dystopian kind of apocalyptic kind of things that, you know, times like these kind of lead us to, it's really about making use of technology as a force for good. It's about, you know, creating solutions that will not only impact the present, um, you know, help us, you know, generate some returns, right? But it's really about, you know, also what we can do for the next generation. So while everyone has a different definition or vision for the future, and they're, they're all going about it, you all are all going about it in your own different ways. We're, what's clear is that we're all kind of tied together by this desire to create impact and that, you know, we're, we will be part of building something um, amazing for the future. So again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, please do continue to support our startups in their journey. It's a fantastic time, not just to invest, but to support, to build startups now, right? Um, and to define and create that future that we want to see. We are witnessing it today. Um, I, I'm still very optimistic about what we have for the future. And again, I wish all the best for the startups. We are family. We will always be here for you. Um, congratulations on completing the ninth program. And again, thank you everyone for joining the Idea Space ninth cohort demo day. So thank you very much. Yeah, indeed, though, we are all beaming with pride for all of our amazing startups. Thank you once again, Kat, for that encouraging message. We look forward to seeing the cohort nine, what the cohort nine will do, and we are definitely excited to mingle with the founders and learn more about the work that they do. Once again, Congratulations, founders of Idea Spaces 2021 Acceleration Program. Well done, Cohort 9. And of course, thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon and most especially for showing your love and support to all our startups for their Idea Space Demo Day. All right, thank you so much. Now to all the startups that presented today, I would like to extend the man my heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you. Oski and I have been there. We know the struggle. Um, and with that, we want to give you a big, warm welcome to the Idea Space family. To all our viewers, we hope to see you at the Startup PH Metaverse at 6 p.m. And to all our guests here on Zoom, May we kindly request for you to stay for the exclusive networking activity coming up. Once again, thank you everyone. This has been Oski King, co-founder of Cleaning Lady PH. And I'm Cass Monzon, co-founder of Working. Have a great rest of the week and see you later.